This is Again for the First Time with your host, Darren Redmond. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the year 2024. And I am so happy that one of my first guests this year is here to talk about something I know you're thinking about when you say 2024, you think sexy and math. And that's, and I'm, I'm, I'm actually, I hated math growing up. And there's reasons why. And by the way, when I say reasons why, it always comes down to me. But then I fell in love with math. Absolutely fell in love with math. Um, and um, when I was doing my undergraduate work, and, uh, you know, Steve Hare is somebody who, I, this is the first time I'm meeting, but I've been a follower of, of, of his content on social media. And I am a a big believer in education. And, and I'm a, as you know, I'm, I'm a special education teacher. I have my master's in education. And uh, Steve Hare, what you do with math, you know, is just it with fat freaks and and the next generation. I just want to talk in detail what you have going on. Thank you for being my guest. And how are you, sir? Thank you for having me. And I'm doing very well, very well indeed. Uh, by the way, we're going to talk Santa Cruz too later because I used to live in California for 16 years. But for those who don't know, you are the math whisperer. I like that. <laughs> you know, I like the no talking class. No, so. <laughs> Talk a little bit about the genesis of your philosophy with math and uh, how you became a math whisperer and, and everything else. Yeah, the the, um, the main thing is I went through, I've been doing this for 30 years. So I went through every fad, every educational you know strategy. Um, I tried them all out and I happened to be in a district where as luck would have it, I never really got supervised much by anybody, by math people. It was mostly language arts people tended to be in administration. And so as a result, I was free to try things. Mm -hmm. uh, I wasn't really, and the, the test scores in the district, it was a, a upper middle-class district. The test scores were usually fine. So I was, I was allowed to experiment. Well, I experimented with everything. I went in the direction of, you know, reform math. I I turned my classroom at one point into math land mm -hmm. where I pushed the desks all to the side. I used the floor as it was square foot floor tiles and I used it as graph paper. And I had X, Y axes on the floor. Then I had a Z axis that went from the floor to the ceiling. And I got cubic foot boxes, all kinds of stuff. And we did, I did all kinds of things like that. And um, I thought I used to get like really good observations, you know, for doing that kind of stuff. And the parents thought that was interesting, you know, back to school night and everything. And then uh, my standardized test scores from those years were not good, not what I was hoping for. And I gradually started, I gradually came to the opinion that, you know, these kids are like, they're enjoying the entertainment, but I don't know that they're really learning math. And gradually I started um, turning. Actually, uh, the the thing that really spun me was I used to have a box called, I called it final answer box. It was like from uh, who wants to be a millionaire, right? So is this your final answer? And I used to have the kids write answers to a math problem on a piece of paper, and then they'd have to come up and put it in the final answer box. And of course, I'd ask them, is this your final answer? And then I'd go through the answers and I'd I, it was a way of, for me to get feedback. I wanted to see like how many of them got the problem correct. You know, did they understand what I was doing? And one day I was doing this and uh, I'd say maybe 25% uh, of the kids got the problem right. And I started getting depressed. And then as I was going through the other papers, I realized that 75, the other 75% all had the same wrong answer. And that was an epiphany to me because I was like, that must be correctable. If they're all thinking, yep, yep. right? If they're all, you know, conceiving of it. That's wonderful way. insight, by the way. Yeah, well, it was something it, like, it's an insight that was forced upon me by the situation because like mm -hmm. your, the bottom line is like, all right, so what do I do to, to, to deal with this, you know, reality that I now came across? 
And so gradually I started experimenting with all kinds of things. And we had talked about um, fact freaks. Um, that was one of my big experiments where I was like, these kids, a lot of the reason they're, they can't keep up in math. And this was fifth grade. I think I'm trying to teach them fractions and they're trying to count their way to three times four, you know, or count their way to, you know, eight times seven, which was like, all right, they're never going to get there. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, they need to know their basic math facts. And I had been doing programming kind of a, as a hobby for a number of years. And I thought, oh, it's got to be pretty simple to write a program that, that can do this for me. And then the, the epiphany there was I, at one point I was like, hey, wait a minute, what if I made this a race against the clock, right. put a speedometer in it, and at the end, they actually got an actual speed in math facts per minute and just had randomly generated, you know, math facts. And when I did that, then the kids were just hugely into it. And I knew that, oh, wow, they're going to do this on their own. And uh, like I can offload that task onto them, make my job easier, make it more fun for them you know, make it easier for them to keep up in class. So I'm going to jump ahead a little bit, and then I want to go back. Sure. The one thing when I saw it, and I went to a website and and partook, if you will, partake, mm -hmm. um, did you find that the way that it's set up helped students become less nervous about test taking because they're so used to now going against a, an internal clock yeah, um, I think that's a, that's a very interesting point to make. That's a uh, a good point to make because the bottom line is, um, when they found they could be successful at something, that changed the whole ball game. And it didn't matter that it was it wasn't the biggest part of math by you know a wide stretch, but the bottom line is you have kids that are going well. I'm good at this part of math, mm -hmm. and then so they're more open to maybe I'm good at other parts of math. Yeah, I, I think of a book, and I forget the author, was Shame on Me, who was an Israeli uh, economist, uh, Think Fast, Think Slow. Oh, wonderful Daniel book. Kahneman and oh, what a, Diversity. What a wonderful book. That's oh, my gosh, I, one of my favorites. You know, and when he tell, he he starts the book by talking about the, you know, if, if your friend goes to the store and he buys this and this, and everybody gets it wrong, including myself, because you just jump to what the answer is. Right, you know, just doing it fast doesn't mean how many points you give away and how we think, and I, I, yeah, there's just it's, a meshing there. Yeah, the the thing that the way I describe it uh, is what we're really doing with because the, the point is with fact freaks. Some people will say to me, "Well, do they need to be that fast?" And I'm like, "No, they don't need to be that fast. We're using the speed thing to get them to automaticity." It's yes. kind of a proxy for automaticity. Yes. But the idea is, it, it, I was very much thinking about Daniel Kahneman when I created it, because the bottom line is we're, we're taking something and teaching it to our subconscious. And then it's yes. there and you can rattle it off. You know, I have tried to get there because I'm, I'm a big believer in, yes, you do pre-assessment testing. But mm -hmm. just as a way of saying, okay, what am I dealing with here to help this person succeed? Mm -hmm. um, and I'm a big jigsaw type. So there's mm -hmm. some people more tactile. There's some people that are more audio and that's okay. And we bring it together. So mm -hmm. I'll set up different programs. Here's the thing. I remember because I've coached college football mm -hmm. and um, I would have these kids because they, this is learned behavior. They would say, you know, you know, coach, I, I, I stick at math. I'm F and hate math. I'm, and I'm mm -hmm. like, BS. I said, you're very good at math. You just don't realize it. Do you know when you throw a three-step out pass, you're doing physics, geometry, right. philosophy, you know, right. velocity. You just don't realize that's what you're doing. Well, funny you should say that because the, the next thing that we're working on, you teach you, which is a mm -hmm. curriculum, but it's a self-instruction. I want to talk about that. But no, but I, it's... it's so the football analogy makes it a perfect segue because yeah, let's do it. Yeah. How do you how do you learn a football skill? Well, you watch somebody demonstrate it, and then you try mm -hmm. it, and you get the feedback. Did it yep. work or didn't it work? Right. We don't do that mm -hmm. when we teach math. We have to start doing that. When we nope. teach math. They need well. That's the whole thing. Yeah. No. No. Go, go ahead. ahead. No, that's the whole thing. It's like, um, how can we do things better? Well, 
one of the ways is sure we don't we don't need a the hat and cane I hear well meaning teachers say I'm not there to entertain the kids. Well you need to make it entertaining in some capacity that they want to learn. And like I tell I told a lot of people during COVID, why is it you know you told these kids that they're spending too many time on computer games. Well this this kid, this child who's struggling putting fractions together can you know build a website and can do things on a computer that the parent and the teacher can't do, where are we going wrong? Right. Well break that code. This is yeah, the 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 problem as I say, well let me put it this mm -hmm. way. I know um Mihai she sent Mihai's concept of the flow state. Yes, I know yes. game developers, I've learned this via Twitter, game developers use that. They actually have charts of it, like on their wall to remind them, like, you have to keep the tasks within the flow channel. In mm -hmm. other words, the Goldilocks zone. The tasks can never be too hard. They can never yep. be too easy. If they're too hard, the kids are going to give up, think they're stupid, and they're going to have behavior problems. That's if they're right. too easy, they're going to go, this is just boring, and they're going to give up. So it right. has to continuously be challenging, but at the same time, within their within their reach. And if you get them right there in that pocket, they're going to continue to do it. They're going to get addicted to it. Oh, so yeah. we can actually make math addictive. And I've actually like in the same way that fact freaks is addictive um, because the challenge is always there, but they're, they're always, they always have the skills to meet the new levels of the challenge. Well, I'm going to ask for more of a philosophical um, thought process here. Where have we as a society gone wrong? I can tell you where that, I can tell you precisely where we've gone wrong. Please. We, if you look at math textbooks, right? You'd mm -hmm. be hard pressed to find examples in them. We keep thinking that, no, you have to give kids work to do. No, you have to give them examples to look at first. And these yeah. examples have to be crystal clear so that they're completely unambiguous, so that teachers can understand what's going on with the example, so that parents can understand what's going on with the example if they're trying to help their kid with the homework, and most importantly, so the kid can understand what's going on. Then you look at the example, just like you would with, you know, how do I, how do I throw a spiral? You watch you watch the demonstration, right? Then yeah. you try it. And if it spirals, you're good to go. But if it doesn't, okay, we're going to have to make some adjustments here. So the other side of it is they have related practice problems, and then they have feedback, specific feedback, including worked solutions, yes. not just the answer. They Because we're wasting so many opportunities if we just show the answer because the bottom line is if they went wrong at some point they need to be able to find out where they went wrong that's right so they can correct so if you ask me we we haven't we haven't tailored the instruction to the individual we've been teaching groups and that's oh, a, because we had kind of had to because it was yep, yep. you know you're, you're talking about public education. You're talking about big groups of people. You have to process at one time. But that doesn't mean it works. No. People learn on an individual level. You, of, of all people, would know, you know, that they learn at different rates. 100%. They, they need time. Some kids need a lot of time to study examples. Some kids are going, I don't need this example. I think I got it. That's right. And so they need to be able to access it, you know, the way they need to access it. And you have to teach both of those students or, or some, right. sometimes half a dozen of those students at the same time. Right, or 30. Yes. 30. Yeah. I've had oh, kids. Yeah. Well, yeah. As a sixth grade teacher, sixth grade regular ed math teacher, I've had kids who, mm -hmm. who I got were functional se second grade level math and some who were ready right. for, cal you know, pre-calc. And it's, and they're all, and all levels in between. And you're supposed to be having them do this. It was, it was crazy. So what I figured out and what we're working on now is how to turn it over to them to and right. but it's not when when educators talk about turning it over to the students, usually what they mean is turning the whole kit and caboodle over. It's, no, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about, no. you know, we're gonna give them plentiful examples and then we're yep. gonna related practice problems and detailed feedback that they can access themselves. But the bottom line is like it is absolutely structured. It's not just, you know, a free-for-all where the kids, you know, you just throw them into a situation. You, you know, there, there was a business book uh, on the power persuasion uh, by uh, uh, Professor Cialdini. 
mm -hmm. uh, about reciprocity. And, and that's what this sounds like. And I believe in that. I, sh you know, I'm giving you good examples mm -hmm. just by reciprocity. The right. student many times says, oh, this is interesting. Let me try it. Let me try and it. And once they try that, they take ownership. Yeah, exactly. correct. How many times have classroom teachers been in the middle of an example at the board and you'll have a kid go, can I just do it? Because they already got it. They already understand yep. where that's going. And we're holding yep. them back because we don't know what else to do because you have a whole group. And I'm not blaming teachers. They're no, faced no, with, I with a situation. It's just like not workable. You know? Oh, absolutely. It's tough. Yeah. You know, I don't need to, it's tough. You know, um, an ELA example that I like to give because of a certain age and, and um, in New York City, I remember I told this on my podcast before, when they graduated James Madison High School in, in Brooklyn, and then I went and I was Irish though in English. I was in, in getting about 94, 95 hours. But mm -hmm. yet when I went to Brooklyn College, I had to take you know, non-credit you know, uh, English classes just to boost my English yeah. up. I could not yeah, write get a in. college level paper. Yeah, just yeah. I, I remember because this is who I was and always am. I went to Mr. Mittman, our uh, the head of the English department, not like this, but like, how did I get a 95, 94 average? Yeah. Go on stage as an Arista student, and I cannot write a paper. And he looked me in the eye, and I love him to death. He gave me a great answer. He said, you are a riff child. In your whole generation, reading is fundamental. We taught you to read. Right. Oh, yeah, I remember. Didn't yeah. have the... Yeah, you're right. We didn't have the time or the resources to teach you how to write. And you know what? Yep. I thank you for the honesty because I knew what I had to work on. Yeah. And to your point, you have 30, 35 kids in a class. You can't do it all. It's it's the elephant in the classroom, and people don't want to talk about it. My personal opinion is that mm -hmm. it's impossible to do it that way. I agree. Because kids are people are too different. Yep. Kids are too different from each other. And, but if we can give them the means of accessing it, Yep. That's a that's a different ball game, and I, I mean, found that it absolutely works. I mean, I fell in love with math, and I'm embarrassed to say, from the movie, you know, John Nash, A Beautiful Mind. Oh yeah. You know, when I saw that, I just started to unravel, and oh, I've yeah. always lo I always love movies, and I've done documentaries, but I love that. And then I had a physics teacher, um, who to me, ah, now I see it working practical. Yeah. Now I see how. Oh, you can see the shadow of a of of, of a, a coming from at noon in Greece and get the circumference of the world within twenty two yeah. miles. This is interesting to me. It was practical. Yeah. It wasn't just numbers on a board. Was, yeah, that's another thing because a lot of times you'll have educators that'll say, "Well, we don't have to talk about how practical." No, you do have to talk about it being practical. You also have to be honest with them and say, "Hey, you you might not be able to see the application of the thing I'm teaching you today because that's pretty far down the road." Mm -hmm. But you know, you've seen over time that we've been talking about things that are absolutely practical. So let's talk a little bit. You know, we 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 talked a little bit about uh, fact freaks. Mm -hmm. Let's talk that next generation that's coming out soon i was really excited but we were kind yeah, of the next generation which is basically um <laughs> starting tomorrow it's going to be I love it. all of my efforts um we're starting to put publish we're we have one book ready to to uh publish and it, if, if anybody's interested it's at uteachu.org uteachu.org i'll have it down here sir and, I appreciate and get that. it and i'll be it's promoting be the heck out of it the first book is how anybody can teach themselves basic math operations. So multi-digit addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. And it's designed for uh, classroom teachers who might want to use it. Mm -hmm. They could teach the examples and then the kids have a copy of it to work from, you know, in front of them. You could, uh, it, a really good application of it is like middle school. Uh, I, I use it at the beginning of the year in, in sixth grade, seventh grade, because I, I'll have them work through the sequence to make sure that they all have that and they can mm -hmm. do it on their own. So even if, if the kids is slower than other kids, I'll just go, we'll just do it home, finish it tonight at home. And they're fine with that because they realize, no, I'm actually learning this stuff. So the, the, the first book 
is basically basic operations. And then the next book I'm going to start putting together starting the end of this week is fractions. And then it's going to be decimals and, uh, you know, um, going to, I mean, it's going to go all the way up to like linear equations and no, that's great. And so forth. Uh, but like negatives, like I see tons of eighth graders who have no clue how to work with negatives. Right. So it'll allow them to catch themselves up if they need it. It speaking to your question about colleges, it'll allow college kids who are taking remedial classes to pull themselves up. And that was what I was forgotten. <laughs> remedial, thank you very much. Yeah. Yes. It's, see, uh, because the bottom line is like, it's it, it, that hits them like a ton of bricks. Like if I don't learn this stuff, I'm not getting into college. Oh, hundred percent. So this gives them the, like the, the thing is, you know, this from having a, a athletic background, what this does is because it's, it, it's self-paced, self-instructional, self-checking, what it does is it allows them to to get as many practice swings in as they want. Oh, they can spend as much time on it as they want. They can go to the batting cages as often as they need to, you oh, know, and to it. make sure they've mastered it. You know? hey, and, and it's funny, since we're talking about that whole correlation between sports and physical fitness, I'll, I'll, I'll put in there and, and math. And, you know, when you go, like, when you go to the gym, there's nobody there going, you know, you got to get here by this day. You right. got to when you tell somebody, you know, go do some math, work on work on it. Mm -hmm. You're pretty much saying, go work out, right? Go, go work out, some, go work and, out. But and, and if they take it that way, yeah, that's great. They're going to do it. They will do it. Yeah, they can take ownership of it. Yeah, you know, and they're not going to feel as intimidated by it, especially since like my students, they'll tell you right away. They're going. The best thing about it, Mr. Hare, is that you're not looking over our shoulders. Yep. You know, uh, we get to check to see if we've understood it. And that's then, that reciprocity piece again. I'm sorry. Yeah. That's that reciprocity piece. Yeah. And the, what happens then is because it's sequential, once they've mastered some sub skills, well, then mm -hmm. the next activity is going to be a super skill that involves the sub skills. So yep. it it enables them to go, you know what? I'm still a little fuzzy. And they can go back a couple of lessons and get themselves get themselves what they need to go forward. So it turns the, it, the bottom line is it gives them the control over their own education. Yes. I and of course, it. that's not taking anything away from the teachers. Actually, what it does for a classroom teacher is it makes things so much more interesting because you have the kids, they'll ask you substantive math questions. Yes. Oh, and absolutely. then some of the questions are similar because they're in the same level. And so you'll have these great mini lessons with a small group or one kid in the front of the room and you're going to town explaining stuff. It's so much fun, mainly because they're automatically interested in the answer because they asked the question. I think that's just so... And, and, it becomes communal. Isn't it funny? You work it by yourself and it becomes communal. Yeah. It, you work it by and you want to share it. And, and you yeah. want to share the grace of, hey, I'm I got it. Let me help you because I was there. There's another uh, another connection to going to a gym. Mm -hmm. Because the, the beautiful thing with, with it is from the from the kids' point of view, everybody in the classroom, they could be working on wildly different things. One could be working on, you know, geometry, another one could be working on, you know, algebraic expressions, yada mm -hmm. yada. Bottom line is to the kids, there it just looks like they're all working on math. Right. So like it's like in a gym, like you're not getting it's like a gym where there's no judgment. You Correct. know what I mean? Like you're yeah. just working on what you need to work on. Exactly. And I and I and I love that. I, you know, I, I talk, I know to my students about that, you know, I'm mm -hmm. a, look, we live in a world where, you know, it's things are scored and measured, mm -hmm. but, but you get there by just doing the stuff that you do get better, be the best, yeah. better than tomorrow. Even if today is just a push. Yeah. You didn't fall behind you, you, where you want. That's okay. Yeah. And you can always, you can always throw more time at it on your own, which is uh -huh. something that I yeah. myself apply like yeah. when I was getting my master's, they'd said, okay, well, you should set aside two months to prepare yourself for the praxis test. And I'm like, okay, message received. I'll set aside four months because it's like, right. I, yeah. like bottom line is I know the way I am. Like I want yeah. to nail this thing and yeah. I'm going to throw more time and effort. And that's such a good message for young people. Like no, you really can is. throw more time and effort at it. It, it. it really is. It was, um, you know, we could tell these wonderful stories and I definitely want to tell you again, but, you know, I, I'd be remiss to say I have, I have a student 
who um, just out of nowhere wrote me a note and just said, uh, can I start learning Spanish? <laughs> I mean, what's the key word there? Not Spanish, not I want to learn. Yeah. I, 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 I just, I want to learn something. I, yeah. And it was so wonderful is that. Yeah. And what you find is they start, like I've had kids, I'll be watching TV with my wife and I'll have a, a student that email me a, or, or, and a math question. Mm -hmm. And so I'm in the middle of watching a sitcom and I'm typing an answer to them. And this happens, it happens on the weekends because yeah. they, they take ownership of it and they yep. start really enjoying it, yep. you know, and I'm not a big fan of like grading and sorting and all. I mean, you can, I tell, you can tell I'm not either. You can yeah. tell I'm not. You I, can tell I'm not. I believe in standardized tests, but more for right. the sake of, you know, is this is this approach working or isn't it? Pro yes. How, how can I get proof from here? for sorting the kids. 100%. But the, um, but the bottom line is like, we have to have faith in them. They actually do want to get smarter. Yes. Here's one of the things that, like this is just fundamental truth. No kid likes feeling stupid. None of them like feeling stupid. Thank you. Thank like you. Thank you. Hundred percent of them love feeling smart. And if you can tap into that, you yep. got. Them. Oh, I I totally agree. And you, uh, I I need to ask if you don't mind some uh, two or three quick philosophical questions. Oh, absolutely. I love because that. I love what I'm hearing, and it's not just yeah. He's he's I'm agreeing with him. Right, right. Right. But but I just love talking to learned people, and we learn from each other. What is your philosophy on homework and homework on weekends? Uh, I don't like it. I Me never like it. I hate it. I, I hate never liked it. it. I. The bottom line is like, are we saying that that's more important than family time? Yeah, no. And on top yeah. of that, most homework is incomprehensible to the kids and to the teach or to the parents. Yeah. So it's not just homework. It's like agony. Oh, I, I have ten grandkids, so I have you know I have tons of time to watch. You know, I've seen this from the other side so many times. And the bottom line is, if we can accomplish serious things during the school day, yep. give them their time off. They earned it. 100%. Yeah, but agree. we have to get serious work out of them during the school day. And you tell the kids that, and they're like, okay. Yep. Okay, and, I'm, I'm fine. A, I'm I'll sit down and get to work. You know, when I, when my years in a, in a, uh, in a public classroom before where I am now, Mm -hmm. I I used to stop class early mm -hmm. and say, start your homework. Yeah. yeah. Because if you have a question, I'm here to answer your question. Yeah, right. And they appreciated it. No, of course. Was, uh, of course it did. And it, it, it the other thing with that too is so much homework. It's not self-checking. It's not, it's just problems. Yes. And no examples, you know, and so forth. And yeah. so to me, it was always like, what's the point of them going home and doing 20 division problems incorrectly? Correct. And yeah, then you I, get you get the thing where like the teacher trick where the, they get the homework back. Well, the, the powers that be tell them you got to check homework. So they go around to 30 kids and they put a big red C on it. Not right. for correct. It's right. for complete. Complete. Which yeah. is like, come on. Yeah. No, what is the I point know. of that? That's like, it's just, it's just, it's, it's garbage. Meaningless it's, garbage. It's, it's absolutely meaningless. And yeah. the kids are, you know, they have a lot of perception. They, they pick up on it. They can see, yeah. It's just a joke. Right. Because, I mean, I, again, I came from, I, you know, my mom, my dad divorced when I was young, real quick, mm -hmm. you know, living in Brooklyn, Flatbush Avenue, mm -hmm. you know, and let me tell you, oh, yeah. And so, <laughs> you know, it was not joyful for me to go home with homework. No. You know, parents are divorced, you know, the whole thing. You know what I'm saying? So many people have situations. That's what I'm saying. And, and the, the thing is, like, how about we just we treat them like adults? Where when the work day is done, you earned your downtime. You earned. Thank your, you, thank you. You know, look, treat them with respect like that. And what you're going to find is they're not going to goof around when they come in class like they ordinarily do. They're going to be like, no, we have to put in work, right. or else I am going to be taking this paper home for homework. That's right. You know, but yeah. but the bottom line is when they start seeing that that this is meaningful activity, they right. got no problem with doing it. Yeah, and 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 then they choose we go too much to the you know unless you do this 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 then you can't do this that's not good either. Right. You you, you have to build where they want to do this. That whole right. think fast thing slow. Some kinds of they want to they feel the need you know you right. know uh, and it has Mr. to be doable. Yes, Mister Hare is treating me like an adult, right. like a responsible individual. I'm going to do this. 
Right. But, th but then of course you turn around and you go, and you're not doing it for Mr. Hare. You're doing no. it for your future self. Right. And that's yes. when you got them because they're like, Oh, Hey, that, you know, I do care about that person. Oh yeah. No doubt. Let me ask you this before you go. Um, who was that teacher for you? Let me think. I yeah, had tell me a, that moment. I had a college. I I was like you. I didn't I didn't like math when I was in school. Not because I couldn't do it, but it was because I mean, imagine this. I mean, the late seventies in American high schools was not a great time, and I had a I had a trigonometry teacher who I got through, and many of my classmates too got through a whole year of trigonometry without understanding that it was the geometry of triangles. Right. How does that happen? <laughs> right. 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 But when you're just passing out worksheets all day, you know. Exactly. So, um, but I had a college professor who he goes, all right. <laughs> he says, all right. They wanted me to teach you how to teach math. You know, this is teacher training. Wanted me to teach you how to teach math. And what they want me to do is show you all kinds of fun activities you can do. He goes, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to teach you math. Because what you really need to know is math. Right. And he was tough as nails. And he taught us all this math. But man, we learned so much in a short period of time. And you found that like the best part of it was you found out you're starting to like it. Like what you right. were saying. You're starting to enjoy it. And then it's off to the races. You're like, you're not afraid of it. You're you're not intimidated. You're going, this can actually be an enjoyable activity. That's so it. we all we all need teachers like that. Oh know? my gosh. It, it makes all the difference. It takes you, it's like your life was going this way and now it has the potential to go this way. It, it, so. you, it's interesting. We had a math teacher when I was a senior and uh, Mr. Hollis. Mm -hmm. And it is funny. This story, I'll tell you, doesn't concern specifically math. No, no, no. But 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 it was a wonderful life lesson. Mm -hmm. Senior year and people are... You know, saying, well, okay, we're going to get together for life and this and that year, but we're going to stay friends forever. Right. He just told them, listen, I want you to take what we're learning here, and hopefully, most of you will never see each other again. <laughs> yeah. He said, I want you to live lives. I yeah. want you to challenge yourself. Yeah. Don't let senior year of high school oh, be define you. Yes. Yeah, for the rest of your life. And I remember that hit me like a ton of bricks. Yeah, good for him. It was right. It was, it was a hit, yeah. him for saying that because, like, <sighs> there's some. I mean, it's like it's like Springsteen's song "Glory Days," where you love it. Doing is talking about yeah. that was, you know, it's it's terrible to think that the best part of your life already happened. Oh you know? yeah, <laughs> like, it's true. It's, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's so true. Um, Steve, thank you so much for being my oh, guest. This was this was so much fun, Darren. Oh, this is wonderful for me. And we must do this again. If you ever have a Cape Cod on me, let's have some pizza. We're talking pizza. <laughs> okay. I, the pizza, eh. <laughs> <laughs> Not as good as Jersey, New York. But how can people find more about what you have, your books, the websites? Please it's, give them the pitch. It's basically, we're trying to make it easy. It's, it's just two things. It's factfreaks.com, mm -hmm. which for basic math facts, which is completely free. It always will be free for, for students. Beautiful. Um, we're still putting it together. It's um, but it, it the bottom line is our goal there is we want future generations of children to all grow up knowing their basic math facts. I love it. I so love it. Um, as you know, if people can spread it, you know, thank you, right. thank you, thank you, because uh, we will. That's, that's just a, a big goal of ours. And then the other thing is you teach you dot org, which we have name. one book in the can. There's samples of it um on the on the website on you teach you.org and then uh like i said in the next couple of months i'm going to be churning out the we're, we have up to about eight books that we're going to be probably producing over the course of the year oh, that's so great. yeah so um so and uh on the website is a lot about the philosophy behind it you know how it can be used and so forth so, so those two things yeah, just those two things, factfreaks.com and uteachu.org will tell you everything you need to know. I want to wish you a tremendous 2024, and let's talk soon. You as well. Absolutely, Darren. I, I can't tell you how much I enjoyed this. I loved it very much as well. Be well, my new friend. Bye now. Thanks so much, my new friend. <laughs>